Hello, I hope that you are having a fantastic day, whatever day this falls into your lap. This video was a viewer request. So I went on Twitter a few weeks ago and asked, you know, what is it that you want to see? I really want to make sure that I create content that resonates, that is helpful, that's beneficial to your life. Um, hopefully entertaining as well, but definitely wanted to make sure that content that I create is very impactful, very intentional, um, because it's how I live my life and that's how I like to produce for the world. So a topic that came up was how to not seek outside validation and how to be like comfortable within yourself and that's a very, like, it took me a little minute to sit and reflect about that topic because it's not a easy topic um, in our society. We have the tendency to be very detached, but not in a good way. Like we're so detached from things because we don't want to show that we have feelings, which is absolutely human, like completely human. And so in this video, I'm going to provide my point of view, the way I look at things, when it comes to happiness and that is an inside job. So if you want to know more, stay tuned. All right, so to start out this video, I'm going to give a little bit backstory about me and I hope that it hits and kind of expounds on where I'm going to come from when it comes to some points to help you work through the happiness within and really working that happiness is the inside job. So growing up, I was a little chunky, little chocolate guy, and I definitely had a lot of confidence, uh, really creative, um, almost kind of futuristic in a way. Like I was always in my own little world and I was also someone even at a very itty bitty tiny top age I understood way more than maybe most of my peers more than likely but with that confidence that was within me it was in direct conflict with the household that I lived in um, I grew up very poor I grew up with parents that were um abusers of sorts and when you have that sort of confliction there's going to be a constant tug of war of how you develop children are extremely impressionable and especially to those that they call parents or whoever is going to be like that guardian and with children, they look at those adults with fresh eyes every time. Like they forgive their, their parents every single time. And they also listen to their parents because these are the people that they have. They're supposed to be like shepherds. They're supposed to be protectors. And so you listen to what they tell you and it, you internalize it. And especially at such a young age, you're getting so much downloaded data and information from observations, from experiences, from school, from parents teaching you, like you get a lot. And so when that data and that um, information, that code, if you will, um, is tainted, it's not very good code. It's you're, you know, you're fat. So you need to work harder for people to like you. Um, you're always going to be at the bottom you, um, unless you have money, you know, you won't be able to have friends. Um, unless you have an accomplishment, you're undeserving of love. So when you hear that constantly, and then you also see that happen out throughout your life, where you're pitted against cousins, relatives, and if you got an A, you were praised and loved, but if you got a B, it was a completely different action in energy. It was um, very hostile, and God forbid if you got a C or something, it was there was no grace, there was no love, there was none of that. So when you're in that impressionable state of life as a child, eventually the confidence that you may have had starts to get shipped at. It's like it just bit by bit by bit 
it starts to dwindle and that child then becomes insecure that child becomes fearful they start to operate out of fear um, because of the love that they're not getting and that's at the core and so at the core of everything especially if you grew up that way um, and if you experience any other traumas such as uh, physical mental emotional financial sexual abuse any of that just just amplify that by 10 times more when you go through all of those things and you're basically left to have to cope on your own there isn't any sovereign space or person that help rescue you there isn't any one there to comfort you you will begin to create ways in order to deal and those coping mechanisms helped you get through that situation and eventually you would hope that they fall away once you're out of that environment but unfortunately human nature um, unless that's corrected unless there's like somewhere of some real hardcore intentional correction it's not happening so you grow up into an adult with that code inside of you and that code continues to spit out that same rhetoric like a virus almost like a computer virus and it just keeps you know encrypting you with all that same garbage and you start operating in the world and you're not the only person that operates like that so you may find people who do that um, who either give you what you're used to is of that demeaning that ugly rude coarse behavior and thinking it's tough love because that's what you have been conditioned to um or you find friends who are similar to you um who have that kind of same negative heaviness and it's not a slight at you because i had to go through that my own self but it's just this the way it is from a more healthier viewpoint it is very heavy it's very um restrictive and it's not comfortable and it's really truly not the norm um, and I don't like to use the word normal but it's definitely not on the healthy spectrum of ways of coping and dealing with life so when it happens you will start to seek happiness in any way possible so this would mean you know something really wild out there would be someone who has a drug addiction I have never touched drug in my life, but that would be, with all the research that I've done, um, it's one of the big proponents to why people run to drugs. Like a continuous trend, they have, they you know endured abuse, they endured uh, a lot of suffering or whatever, and the drugs were a means of escape, and it was a means of seeking something to comfort outside of self. Um, you know, our society has a drinking problem everyone's wine o'clock it's you know shot 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 and that's another one of those ways to cope uh, others is sex having a bunch of situationships with god you know whatever partners just to get away again seeking validation so validation it could be acceptance it could be tell me that i'm good tell me that i'm pretty you think i'm pretty like um it could be love me um it can be Tell me that I, you know, validate my existence. Tell me that I'm okay. Tell me that I'm good enough. And when a person is constantly pining for that through other people, it puts you in a really screwed up predicament because now what should have been your power that you control, you are willingly, unconsciously, but willingly giving that away like government cheese. And it should never be that way. It should never be given to other people because they don't have the instruction manual on you and how can they tell you that you matter that you uh, to validate your existence they can't they can barely validate themselves so how or why would you give your infamous power to another being that's a mere mortal just like you like how that doesn't come off rude but just like I want you to get that at the core of all of this 
it's uh, the, the core that I found, the trend that I found with uh, all the research I've done, um, especially now that I'm pursuing my grad degree here some months from now, um, the core of seeking happiness outside of self is, am I enough? That is the core issue. Am I enough? And I just kind of want to let you know that seeking outside validation is always going to be a bad move because it's always going to be a moving target. What was today, what, what was hot today and acceptable today, tomorrow it won't be the same. It'll be some new target, some new thing that you have to do. And depending on who you have in your life, you may mess around and have some people that are like truly diagnoses-wise narcissistic sociopaths. They actually are separate beings. Um, sometimes they commingle, but they can be, they're very separate. Uh, you'll find yourself with those sorts of people or attracting those sorts of people because they can sniff it out on you. They can sniff out the need for validation and with their minds as warped as it is mentally, um, is a true mental illness, like diagnostic, diagnostically, like it's an illness. Um, I hate that the term has gotten used in a way that is not supposed to be. Like there are just some people who are assholes. <laughs> they're manipulative. They're just that way. And then you do have true case textbook narcissist sociopath types of people. And even if you do get a classic textbook version of that, there they see something in you. And they're manipulating that for their gain. And it does a number on your mind, your psyche. Um, and for a lot of people that go through that, they really don't recover. Um, some people even have parents that are the very narcissist, sociopath parent. Um, and it causes a lot of harm. A lot, a lot of harm. But I just want you to understand that, you know, that's not a really far-fetched, like, really out there, the worst case scenario. But if you know, more in a mental balance area. Anytime that you go out, it's always going to come up wrong. It's always going to come up short. So you need to go from within. And the way that I like to operate with life is that you work from the inside out versus the outside in. So what I mean is some people will blame someone else that made them mad. Oh, Susie made me mad because she took my favorite cookie and it was the last one. And so you're giving your power away to say that she made you do X, Y, Z. Versus it being inside out where you are in control of how you respond. So same issue, someone took your cookie, how you respond. It's Okay, let me find out why she took my cookie. Maybe it was really attractive to her. Maybe she was having a really bad day. Maybe she's going to buy me some more. She's going to give me some money for my lost cookie. Whatever that may be. That's the inside out. It's not easy to do because our society, our society as the collective has made it to where it's acceptable to blame other people, to blame blame outside things. Like, yes, things happen and bad things have happened. Like, I definitely can attest to very not so great things happening in my life. However, as an adult, I have the choice and the power to decide how I will respond and react to different things. Will you get it right all the time? God, no. <laughs> like if you're in a bad mental space, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're burned out, especially this pandemic, you know, we're still under this impression that we need to produce on pre-COVID levels during COVID. Like, doesn't make sense, but that's, that's the reality. The productivity is still there. You know, that's why you see, oh, well, if you haven't lost 60 pounds and you haven't started a business while you're in quarantine, you suck. No, not at all. Not at all. Completely opposite. So think about all that you're going through with this global pandemic, civil rights issues, like 
<laughs> there's just so much you watch the news and it's just like what the heck like what is this like am i on a reality tv show like it's just wild so if you're in that kind of space things happen you may not always be in control or can have that automatic but you would want to work towards that the more you work towards it it becomes like a muscle like when you work out you work out your arms eventually you'll start to start seeing some progression in those arm muscles or at least feel um, that you know you can feel that there's some tone there's muscle underneath there and that's the same thing with working from the inside out so my theory of happiness is an inside job you decide if you're going to be happy you know it's easy to say oh, if i had money if i had beyonce's body uh, if i had this this and this i could be happy you get to choose happiness i've met people who have had very little to anything and they were the happiest people in the world now not to say that having nice stuff is not nice like please <laughs> look at this yeah we like stuff we like nice stuff <laughs> but it's a choice at how i operate in my current state of lot of life because there are people who have millions who are miserable and there are people who have zero who are just as happy as can be i remember some years ago i worked for the state of texas and i got to talk to this guy he lost his job and he was living with friends him and his wife were living with some friends and he's like yeah i get to be with my wife all the time now that's my best friend we get to go to like um, home depot and get mulch for our flowers and we made a garden and he was the happiest man in the world happy you would have thought he was like some elon musk level financial like just oozing out not at all like at all Hope like he's older, life totally pivoted, but he chose to work from the inside out. So I have a few tips and ways to be able to become in that way of operating from the inside out, you know, really working on the happiness from the inside. Number one is to ensure that you are aligned with your full self. When you have fragmented parts of you like there's parts that you show the world that you think is presentable that you think is favorable and then there's other parts that you reject or the world is even potentially rejected maybe even growing up there are parts of you maybe you were bold maybe you were just audacious like you had the audacity to do certain things and your parents your home life did not agree with that like who do you think you are who do you think you're talking to? You know, like basically berating you, put you back in your place, no child's place sort of energy. So maybe that part, you've rejected that. Until you make that, you take those parts that you've rejected or that's been rejected and align them with what you believe is presentable and acceptable, you're always going to have conflict. It's always going to be trying to seek that the parts that you think that are acceptable, what's happening is that you are trying to get the approval from the world that they're okay. And you're always going to have issues because you're really only operating at 20-30% when there's a good, hell, 80, 70 to 80% that's still out there that makes the fool you. And you're not going to be happy. So you're always going to be either uh, I'm an overachiever, I'm overworking out, I'm doing the most in a not healthy way. That is where that inside out is going to be very key. Number two is going to be figuring out what your core needs are. What do you want for your life? What do you want? Like really ask yourself that. What would make me happy? What does life look like with me being happy and how can I do those things how can I implement that into my life when you can do that that is going to help you really set the stage for happiness as an inside job because you're going to be doing the things that make you happy 
Um, for me, for a great example, um, I got laid off in December. I've been working since I left college in 2010. And corporate America really did a number on me. And if I'm really honest, corporate America and me should have never known each other. Maybe for a year or two to get a little money situated, but honestly, me and corporate never mix because my mindset and corporate America, they don't play well. They, they're oil and water. I'm looking at radical, visionary, doing things and making things happen, like working at excellence. And for most of the corporate experiences I've had, it's been pretty stay in your lane, don't talk too much, don't be too out there, don't stand out. But I can't help but stand out. That's just how I operate. And so knowing what's going to be for you and making those changes, as scary as it may be, will help you to work from the outside, from the inside out, and make that happiness an inside job. And number three, give yourself grace and operate as a new. It's, I look at change as automatic. I had an old um, fling, <laughs> and I remember one thing he said that really stuck with me was change is immediate. So if you say that you want to change, then the fact that you said that you want to change is right there. Now, that's not to say that if I say I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to drop 150 pounds like instantly. Nope, if you do, you probably should seek some medical help really fast. Something's wrong. <laughs> but other than, you know, it's a mental change. Like if the mind is changed, then the body will follow. Like, you know, the old kind of flow or formula is your thoughts become actions and your actions become the life and the reality that you live. So the fact that you said that I'm changing, there's a thought. Now action is watering that seed of thought. And then once you water that enough, you'll start to see the actual fruits of your thoughts. And that's what we're here for. We want that. We want to work in that inside out versus outside in. Because when the outside comes in, there are just so many things that may not even align with you. You're probably doing things that don't align with you, that don't make you personally happy, that don't resonate with you at all. But because of how the world, society functions and just how the collective as a whole, we operate, it makes for people to operate in ways that are not the best serving to them. So I hope these tips and tricks about happiness and how to make that a goal for you, like how you operate, were helpful. Let me know in the comments if you were feeling this, if this resonated, if you have some additional tips. And if you have a video topic that you would like me to cover, drop it in the comments. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. And don't be rude. Share this video with your friends. And until next time, make sure you're living your best life.